Reggae Just Extra with Ross Dennis. Since the murder of Henry John Joe Laws and a gang-related attack in Harlesden, London, just like the case of Fathead, who equally lost his life due to his involvement in the Miami drug trade some years ago. Henry John Joe Laws' footprint cannot be easily erased in the history of reggae music. At 39 years old, he accumulated some of Dancehall's biggest hit songs for his Volcano label. Volcano was responsible for countless hits, with a teenaged singer named Barrington Livy, Sister Nancy, Yellow Man, and Purple Man, herein referred to as twin brothers born to two different mothers. My name is Ras Dennis, and you are welcome to another video by Reggae Gist Extra. You are now watching Reggae Gist Extra's Yellow Man and Purple Man's edition. Today's episode is about Yellow Man and Purple Man, the twins brothers born to two different mothers. Kindly stay tuned and do remember to subscribe to this channel, like, share, and most importantly hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. Me have to walk and talk with your loving on me heart. Me have to walk and talk with your loving on me heart. My favorite singer is Leroy Smart. But when me go out, as me make me walk and talk. Jam and jam and jam and me and go cut the dance. Banana in the walk, then cut it like this. Stop me have to walk and talk on with your loving on me heart. Me have to walk, right? No with your loving on me heart. Me have to talk. Trod along by Purple Man, a.k.a. Peter Yellow. He was born Anthony Jones in Clones District in Manchester, Jamaica. He became a regular at dances in Waterhouse during the late 1970s. He started music when he was just 10 years old. His uncle who had a sound system way back, he would hand him a microphone and say toast it. While growing up as a teenager, he started DJing at other sound systems around Waterhouse, such as Studio Mix, where he started coming up with the name Chili Ranking. Chili Ranking was his first and was given to him by General Echo. Just then, as part of the already professional collaboration with Studio Mix, King Jammy himself noticed him and told him to DJ under the name Peter Yellow. He often called himself Yellow Man and even released an album under this name. Nicodemus, who was a member of his King Jammy's crew, told him, You're too yellow in this business, so you're a purple man from now on. The name change was because of people referring to Winston Foster as King Yellow Man. You are now watching Reggae Gist Extra's Yellow Man and Purple Man's Edition. On the other hand, Winston Foster, who is also known as Yellow Man, was born in Negril, Jamaica, in 1959. He was an early target for abuse because of his albinism, grew up in an institution, Maxfield Children's Home and Alpha Boys School in Kingston where the likes of Leroy Horsemouth Wallace and Johnny Osborne in Kingston, with little to keep him company besides music. Influenced by early toasting DJs like Uroy, he practiced rhyming and got a job with the Gemini Sound System as a substitute DJ. Christening himself Yellow Man and dressing in a bright yellow suit, he peppered his lyrics with jokes about his skin color and outlandish tales of his sexual conquests. In 1979, he won a landslide victory at the well-known Tasty Talent Contest, and within months he had become one of Jamaica's top concert draws thanks to a dynamic, humorous stage show in which he often used the microphone to mimic his anatomical gifts. Yellow Man recorded prolifically in the early 80s, at one point flooding the Jamaican market with more than 40 singles. His first full-length album, The Ma Mad Over Me, was recorded for Channel One in 1981 and featured the hit title track and the single Me Kill Barney, an answer record to Lone Ranger's hit Barnabas Collins. He also scored with singles like Operation Eradication and the infamously slack shorties, which Peter Tosh condemned as degrading to women, hardly the first time such a criticism would be leveled at him. Despite this success, Yellow Man didn't truly hit his stride on record until he hooked up with groundbreaking dancehall producer Henry Junjo Laws. 
The 1982 LP Mr. Yellow Man kicked off their collaboration, released internationally by Greensleeves. It started to break him in the UK and US, and is still often acclaimed as his best album. It also launched a series of Jamaican hit singles over the next few years that included Yellow Man Getting Married, a rewrite of the My Fair Lady number I'm Getting Married in the Morning, Mr. Chin, Who Can Make the Dance Ram, a rewrite of The Candy Man, Zunga Zunga Guzing, sampled by several hip-hop acts, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Soldier Take Over, and Nobody Move Nobody Get Hurt, among others. Yellow Man was linked to the slackness which dominated dancehall reggae during the 1980s. He has defended himself, consistently saying he was only having fun. Many of his recordings during this era featured vocal contributions from fellow DJ or toaster, Fathead, who was later murdered in Florida, United States on December 22, 1988, dying from a gunshot wound. During an interview with Winston Foster, Yellow Man, carried out by Steve Day in Brighton, England on November 4, 2009, Yellow Man confirmed that Fathead, Vernon Rainford, was actively involved in the Miami drug trade. It was this involvement that would lead to his death. Like Yellow Man, Purple Man's albinism made him a novelty, though not as big a star. According to Purple Man, who once said, Fortunately, I have never had any problems with my appearance. I've been a star since I was 10, thanks to my mic skills. My biggest struggle, besides illness, would be prod dense royalty scams. I had a fake album out called Yellow Man. The Confessions record, and I'm still a bit embarrassed about it. But it's already behind me, and I'm just thankful for this life. In 1983, I became seriously ill, and it was so bad that I couldn't sing. When the new era of dancehall came around 1985 and Rubadub disappeared from Jamaica, I retired to the village and farmed. Still, I recorded some stuff in the 90s for youth promotion, jaw life, and studio mix, but it just wasn't the vibe of the early 80s. Purple Man Most Fruitful Period came in the mid-1980s. The 1982 album, The Yellow, The Purple and The Nancy is a cult favorite in the United Kingdom. Sadly, Purple Man died on August 14, 2020 at the Kingston Public Hospital due to heart and COVID-19 related complications. His funeral was supported by his twins brothers born to another mother, King Yellow Man, who gave Purple Man's daughter the sum of $30,000 thanks to Claude Big Stone Sinclair. We are at the gate now of Purple Man's daughter. Yeah. We're trying to find out if she's inside. This is a surprise, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. She don't know. She know that we're gonna make a contribution, but she don't know that the king is gonna do it in person because mm -hmm. the king wants to meet Purple Man's daughter. Let me go get the envelope. Although Yellow Man and Purple Man were never born twins, but their relationship was something to emulate as there has never been bad blood between both men even at the point when Purple Man decided to adopt the name Yellow Man to the point of his death. Winston Foster, the real Yellow Man was never bitter, yet donated fund for his funeral. Many thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe, give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Just Extra with Ras Dennis. This is the place to be found.